Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. And uh, by the way, I've noticed or somebody made me aware in the comments that obviously my kind of slogan for acoustic treatment without all the voodoo might not be so appropriate anymore in these times. And I agree. Uh, if somebody has a better idea for a slogan, let me know. I'm definitely thinking about it as well as how, how I can kind of brand my channel in a, in, the, in a proper way, in the same way, giving you the same concept, but uh, with a more socially appropriate term. With that said, let's talk about near field, mid field, far field monitors, or just the terms in general. What do they mean? What does it mean for you? Should you care? That's what I want to discuss in this video. So let's start by just looking at what the concept of near field and far field means in kind of classical acoustical terms. Basically, it's a description of how close or far away you are from a sound source, from a speaker in any given room, right? So I made a video about the details of what the critical distance is uh, in a video where I talked about uh, the monitoring at different volume levels. And you can find that video in the card right now. But basically what we're talking about is a measure that tells us at what point, at what distance from the speaker, the room returns the same amount of energy to your ear as the, it picks up from the speaker itself, right? So when you're really close to the speaker, you're obviously hearing a lot more speaker energy from the speaker than the room returns to your ear just because you're so close. The ratio of energies is weighted in favor of the speaker. As you move away from the speaker and that ratio of room sound to speaker sound uh, reduces or evens out, there will come a point as you move away where those two levels of energy are the same. And that's the critical distance. Once you're further away from the speaker than that distance, you're basically listening to more room than speaker, at least in sort of pure energy terms. And so that's what in kind of acoustic theory we, we mean when we talk about near field and far field. You're in the near field when you're hearing more speaker than room, and you're in the far field when you're hearing more room than speaker. For us in the studio world, it's relevant because we want to obviously hear our speakers as unchanged as possible. We want to hear an honest representation of what is the music that is fed into the speaker. So as a general rule of thumb, you can, you can say for us studio engineers, we always want to be listening to our monitors in the near field. Now, the thing is with room size and with treatment, the critical distance increases. So as the room gets bigger, you can be further away from the speaker and still be in the near field. And as you treat the room more, the critical distance gets bigger and you can be further away from the speaker and still be in the near field, right? So this, this uh, question of near field versus far field is mainly due to room size and the composition, the absorption of the surfaces. It also has to do with the directivity of the speaker, as you'll see in the video that I linked before. But uh, as a general kind of, uh, to, uh, as a general understanding, you could say it increases with room size and with absorption in the room. So it's not so much a question of the speaker alone. But again, for us, the kind of conclusion to, to take from this, the what to take away is that we want to be in the near field. Now, speaker manufacturers have this classification of near field monitors and mid field monitors, sometimes also far field monitors, then we're really talking about kind of studio mains, really big monitors, right? The thing is, th these aren't speakers that are built to somehow work better in the acoustical near field or in the acoustical far field. When speaker manufacturers talk about near field versus mid field versus far field, 
all they're really saying is this speaker is meant to be used at a certain distance. Usually this is determined by how the wave fronts from the different drivers combine to give you a coherent sound feel, like at what distance do they properly uh, combine. But this is completely irrespective of whether the person listening to the speaker is actually sitting in their room's near field or far field, okay? So these two things are actually, although they have the same name, they're completely separate. And obviously we have to note at this point that midfield isn't actually an acoustical term. The mid midfield doesn't exist. In terms of classical acoustics, we have the near field and the far field separated by the critical distance. But uh, midfield is just a term that kind of speaker manufacturers invented to give you an idea of at what, what distance it is meant to be used, right? And so in, in speaker manufacturer terms, a near field monitor is meant to be used at a distance of somewhere between two and four feet. So like, around a meter, I guess. And then a midfield speaker is sort of between maybe four and eight feet distance from the listener. So something like two meters. And then a far field monitor, a mains monitor is meant to be used anywhere beyond sort of the eight feet uh, distance, right? So this is why these terms are quite confusing. All right. In 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 classical acoustical terms, you always want to be listening to a monitor in the near field, irrespective of whether your monitor is built as a near field monitor, a mid field monitor, or a far field monitor. What, whichever type of monitor you get, you get, you always want to be sitting in the actual acoustical near field. Okay. <laughs> so this is why this is where things really get a little confusing. Now, the thing is that in practice, none of this theory actually matters all that much because what is actually going to determine how far you can place your speakers away from your listening position in a home studio is going to be the distance between your listening position and the front wall. And the listening position is always going to be placed at your low end sweet spot. It's not going to move just because you treat your studio and so the critical distance potentially increases. You're gonna sit, you're gonna place your listening position at your low end sweet spot. And from there, the distance to the front wall is all the space you have to place your speakers. That's not never gonna change. Now, within that, that available space, sure, you need to test how far you can actually place your speakers away before the room starts taking over. But in practice, all this means is you find your listening position, which tells you how much available space you have the front to the front wall. Then you simply get the biggest possible speaker physically, the biggest physical speaker you can get, you can justify to set up in that, in that available space. And then with that speaker, you test how far away you can place it without the room taking over and having too much of an impact, right? So none of this talk about near field, mid field, far field really matters. The, the, the available distance that you have is gonna be determined by other factors, namely where your, your low end sweet spot is and how much space you have to the front wall. And in most home studios, this is naturally gonna limit you to some form of near field speaker because you're gonna be placed or you're gonna be uh, you're only going to have m maybe 10 feet, if that, probably only six feet of available space to actually place your speakers. So what you want to take away here is that in a typical home studio, you most likely want a near field monitor, right? A, a, a speaker branded as characterized as a near field monitor. Although this has no real resemblance or no real relation to whether you're actually sitting in the near field or the far field in terms of technical acoustics, okay? If your room is slightly bigger and it is treated, you may be able to upgrade to a midfield speaker, although you are still going to be listening to that speaker in the near field, okay? And none of this is gonna change the process of actually setting up the speakers correctly and finding the right distance to your speakers, which is starts with finding your low end sweet spot, assessing how much space you still have available, 
getting the biggest speaker you you can get physically and then experimenting to find the right distance before the the room has too much of an impact right and that's why i developed the phantom speaker test right which you can download for free at the link in the description it's a test that is meant to show you to it's a, a test meant for you to determine what the right distance to your speaker in your particular room with your particular speaker is because as you go through this test you will actually actively hear when the room starts taking over and having too much of an impact all all it is is comb filters right it's as you move away from the speaker and you sort of and the room starts taking uh, having more of an impact it increases the effect of comb filters on what you're hearing and you will be able to to perceive this it just means as you're moving further away from the speaker the sound gets kind of thinner and thinner it gets filtered by comb filters and this is something you can you can consciously be aware of for and then use to decide where that threshold is of distance that you don't want to cross right and so this is the phantom speaker test uh, this is part of the phantom speaker test to determine your speaker placement it's on one hand figuring out the right uh the right distance between the speakers the right to, to get a proper phantom center and a proper stereo image but in that process you also figure out how far away you can actually place the speakers without the the room having too much of an impact and it doesn't matter whether in theory you are still in the near field or the far field or whether you're using a near field or a mid field or a far field monitor none of this matters because it's a, a completely fluent transition right this 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 measure of critical distance isn't it's not a black and white and either or it doesn't like switch from one moment to the next from near field to far field it's literally just as you may move away from the speakers the room starts having more and more and more of an impact. And the critical distance in technical terms is just a data point on that line somewhere. But this has no, imp this has no uh, proper impact on, on how you need to decide what the right distance to your speakers is. You decide that by listening to your speakers and figuring out at what point the, the the impact is too large for you personally in your personal perception right so again this is the phantom speaker test that i developed for this purpose or amongst other things for this particular purpose and you can download that for free at the link in the description okay long talk lots of confusing <laughs> words thrown around but nonetheless i hope that kind of gives you an a, 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 a an insight into this this, re this relation between theoretical acoustics and practically implementing speaker placement in this case in your room and what that what these terms near field mid field and far field mean and that in fact you shouldn't really care about them all that much okay that's it see you in the next video